In this video, we will go over how to configure a remote worker 40 AP configuration by using the 40 gate firewall uh, as, as a wireless controller. So this video will be similar in the sense that we're, we're going to be adding upon uh, an existing use case that we've gone over previously in, in another video. So I've just linked that suggested video here. Uh, but just to just to recap, in a previous video, what we covered was how do we how do we pretty much install a 40 AP onto a network that the 40 gate has visibility to and then be able to manage that AP, configure SSIDs and firewall policies. Well, we're just going to be slightly expanding on that by, by just considering a different topology. What if we have that same 40 AP, except now instead of that AP being added onto the local network, the AP, maybe it's going to be installed in a different city, a different location. It could be across the world or it could be just, um, you know, somewhere that's not on the exact same local subnet that the 40 gate is attached to. Can that be configured and how can that be done? Well, to, to answer the question, yes, it can absolutely be done. And really the only difference that we need to consider is that now we have to actually go into the 40 AP itself on the GUI interface and pretty much point directly to the 40 gates public IP if we're talking about um, you know communicating over multiple different ISPs so let's jump right into the configuration all right so we'll go to the network interfaces section and we'll go to wherever our WAN public IP resides in in my case here it's going to be on the WAN 1 interface so we do need to ensure that on the WAN 1 interface that security fabric connection is enabled All right, so now the next step is going to be to access the, the actual 40 AP itself. So, you know, in, in this case, we're lucky enough to have that 40 AP already managed by this 40 gate locally. Uh, but then we'll, we'll go over another use case if, if that's not the case, right? It might not always be as convenient as what I'm going to show right now. But let's just start with the easy option is if we're already managing it by our 40 gate firewall, let's just enable... I don't know, HTTPS uh, and SSH so that we can actually access any AP that's associated with this 40 AP profile. And again, that 40 AP profile under manage 40 APs, it's referencing that 40 AP profile. That's why the configuration that we just placed uh, will take effect uh, immediately. So now we'll just grab the IP address that's associated to that 40 AP that the 40 gate has leased out to it. We'll access it. Um, by HTTPS. Okay, and let's proceed forward. Okay, so just like any other Fortinet product, usually the default credentials, usually not always, is going to be admin without any password. Uh, so then we're going to be prompted to add a new password. Okay, and now we're in the AP. So right here is, you know, it's kind of cool. You can see a bit of how the AP has already been configured by the 40 gate since it's managed by the 40 gate. Uh, but then if we go to, I believe it's going to be local configuration. Yes, under local configuration, that's where we can see um, the mode in which the, the access point is going to essentially find the controller, which in, in, you know, more often than not, that's going to be the 40 gate, but it could also be 40 AP cloud. Um, but yeah, by default, the way that the access point discovers its controller is by using auto. So an auto is going to be cycling through these these methods over here. But that's where we need to make a change is we need to actually say, OK, we no longer want to just use the, the automatic AC discovery type. We want to actually statically configure it so that we know what the, you know, to, to the 40 gates public IP. So in this case, we're going to go 166.166.1.2. We'll save that configuration. And there we have it. So now we can actually take this access point and physically locate it really anywhere in the world as long as that access point can communicate to the 40 gate on its public WAN IP, then we should actually see it uh, attempt to be authorized again. And before we forget, just for testing purposes here, let's, let's actually delete that managed 40 AP now, right? So this would be pretty much simulating us having no access point that's visible on the 40 gate. Now we'll take that access point and then we'll actually put it on a different ISP network. Um, but then I'm just gonna ensure that it can actually route back to the 40 gates public IP. Uh, and then that public IP again, 166.166.1.2. 
All right, there we have it now. The 48P is just waiting for authorization and we can see that it's connected via the WAN1 public IP on the FortiGate. Uh, so now we could just proceed with configuration after authorizing the device. Um, but then for the purposes of, of this tutorial, that's really all that we're trying to do here is just get them connected. Um, so now let's just, uh, just before we wrap here, let's go over how we would do this via CLI. All right, so for testing purposes, what I'll do here then is I'm just gonna delete that device again from um, from the 40 gate. Okay, and then on the 40 AP itself, I factory reset it. So just so that we can kind of simulate uh, a brand new environment where there's no type of um, reference to each other, whether it be on the 40 AP or on the 40 gate. So if you've got access to the 40 AP via a console cable, then uh, you can just access it via baud rate 9600. Or additionally, what you could do is you could just ensure that it gets um, an IP via DHCP find out what that DHCP IP is that your upstream device, whether it be a FortiGate or your Windows server, leases out to the um, 40 AP. In my case, it'll be 192.168.111.3. Uh, and then access it via SSH. So after we access it via SSH, we'll just type in admin. We'll be forced to configure a new password. Okay, and then we have access to the, the CLI. Now, if we wanna see the configuration of the 40 AP, CFG dash S. There we go. Okay, and now we'll focus in on two of the existing configurations. So we want to change the AC discovery type from zero, which is auto, to one, which is static. And then we want to change the AC IP address to be the public IP of the 48.166.166.1.2. Okay. So we'll just type in the following command. So CFG um, dash A is how we can set a command. And then CFG dash C is how we're gonna save the two commands that we've just entered right now. Perfect. All right, and just like that, now we can see the, um, the 40AP communicating with the 40 gate, waiting on authorization again. All right, so that wraps things up on how we can configure um, a remote worker 40 AP to uh, still be managed by a 48, even if they're completely remote from each other. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.